Omar Qaddafi was just a 27-year-old army officer when he took power in 1969 after a military coup against Libya's king. He quickly gained an outspoken reputation, highly critical of the West. He no longer wore a military uniform. He played up his Arab pride and tried to unite the Arab world. Later, his flashy accessories, rambling speeches and female bodyguards made him an eccentric leader on the world stage. Gerald Post is the director of the political psychology program at George Washington University. We tend to focus on his eccentricities, but having said that, for the most part, he has been a really rather effective, especially on international uh, 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 platforms. Qaddafi created a social, political, and economic system called Jamahariya, Arabic for the state of the masses. He outlined his philosophy in his famous Green Book. He called for a country without institutions, run by the people and led by him. But Daniel Serwer of the Middle East Institute says it never worked that way. He was uh, somebody who taught the Libyans that uh, they, they should form councils to govern themselves. He didn't allow them to govern themselves. It was one man rule. Serwer says Libya's oil and gas wealth gave Qaddafi influence at home and abroad. He stashed away the riches for himself and his closest allies. He also became a symbol of unity of Libya, which had been kind of cobbled together from different pieces. Ties to terrorism tarnished Qaddafi's international image. The U.S. blamed him for a German nightclub bombing in 1986 that killed two U.S. servicemen. In 2003, Qaddafi took steps to reconcile with the West. He admitted responsibility for the 1988 bombing of Pan Am Flight 103 that killed 270 people in Lockerbie, Scotland. He also renounced weapons of mass destruction and terrorism. In turn, the U.S. removed components of Libya's nuclear program from the country, dropped sanctions, and restored diplomatic ties. But at home earlier this year, thousands of Libyans rebelled against Gaddafi's authoritarian rule. They joined the Arab Spring and demanded he step down. He responded with a violent crackdown. Soon, much of the world was against him, too. The United Nations issued sanctions. NATO launched airstrikes, but Gaddafi refused to leave. There is a conspiracy to control the Libyan oil, to control the Libyan land, and to colonize Libya again. This is impossible, impossible, and we will fight until the last man and woman to defend Libya. It was always about him, Daniel Sorwer and Gerald Post say. He has this internal image of himself. Perhaps another way of saying this is that his major uh, uh, audience is the mirror on his wall. Uh, and he's saying, mirror, mirror on the wall, who's the greatest uh, uh, pan-African uh, Muslim um, uh, third world leader of them all. And he finds ways of reassuring himself that the audience, the answer keeps coming back, you are Muammar. It'll be a legacy of autocracy, of resistance to democracy, of, of uh, really foolishness and delusional foolishness for many people. In the end, Muammar Gaddafi, the young army officer of nomadic parents who touted himself as a unifier, unified many Libyans against him. Julianne McKellogg, VOA News, Washington.